first we will look at what are the areas we have to uh, discuss on non-banking so the subject itself clearly says we are not going to discuss about commercial banking other than anything that comes under the purview of commercial banking belongings belongs to non-bank so that can be the very simple idea okay right so it's eight o'clock we'll straight away start the session our subject is non-banking financial business and our subject area is of known as nbfi non-banking financial intermediaries what do you mean by financial intermediaries whoever pays only two problems because of money okay can someone type me and tell me what are these two problems that you face just because of money i prefer yeah i prefer if someone in the chat box send me an answer okay now money will give you only two problems just think and tell me what are these two problems okay now think about current situation okay right right thanks for attempting now just think practically in this situation in this new normal situation from one side you will find a lot of people saying i have order n95 masks and if i bring down 1 million masks and if i keep 10 rupees per one i'll get 10 million profit but i don't have that money that's one side the other side you can you have seen a lot of senior citizens worry about the lesser interest paid offered by banks and uh, finance companies lot of other people who depend heavily on interest income are worried about the interest rate coming down okay now you can see two sides so what are these problems one side there is a person he says if i bring down this much of masks and if i keep a profit this is my profit but i don't have money to bring down these masks that's one that's one the other okay. the other is you have what is about interest rate coming down now you can see two sides okay now these two parties are facing problems tell me what are these problems right okay so you are giving me and answering the professional language scarcity and inflation okay but if i simplify okay right let me simplify there's one set of people who don't have money but they have the need of money they don't have money so what is their problem not having money they need money that's their problem the other side they have money they do not know what to do with the money am i correct so these are the only two problems money will create for you okay so you have only two problems i have money i don't know what to do with that i have a business idea i have a consumption requirement and i don't have money so you have only two parties those who have money those who don't have money okay now when you have money what do you do when you have money and when you don't know what to do what do you do when you have money yeah very good you deposit it 
perfectly correct. That's what you want to do. The other side, you have a requirement, maybe to make a profit a business idea or to consume, okay? Right, what do you want? Yeah, I'm fighting with, okay, right. That's right, that's right. Now you understand one thing, money will give us only two problems. And now you know that these two problems are coming from two different sides. And one side, those who have money and do not know what to do with money, we call them excess units. The other side, they have a lot of ideas. They know how to consume money at least, but they don't have money. So we call them deficit units. Okay. Now, when you want to take a loan, as you have mentioned, where do you go? When you want to take a loan, yeah, we, you go to a bank. Perfect. Right. When you have excess money and you do not know what to do, where do you go? Where do you go? You want to take a loan, where do you go? again to a bank or a financial institution okay so whether you have excess money or whether you have deficit units of money you go to a bank or the financial institution very good now the party who is giving you money be it a bank or be it a financial institution are they printing money on their own can they do that no no. Right. So what are they doing? What are they doing? They are not printing money. No bank, no commercial bank, no finance company is allowed to print money. Then what are they doing? They are, they are, yes, from one side collect from excess units and translate to deficit units. In the meantime, they are creating. Okay. They are not printing, but they create money. Right. So you accept and deposit, accept the deposits and lend. That is called as financial intermediary. That's what we call financial intermediary. You are collecting money from one side and you are transferring that to the other side. A financial intermediary is typically an institution that facilitates the challenge of funds between lenders and borrowers indirectly. That is savers give funds to an intermediary institution. So you call them intermediary, a third party, such as a bank or even a finance company. And that institution give those funds to spenders, we call them borrowers. So that is financial intermediation. Okay, right. Now the problem is when you have one side shortages, the other side surpluses, they can directly hand over their excess to the deficit and do the transaction themselves. But instead they give it to a bank and the bank will lend out. Depositor give it to the bank and bank will lend out. Why can't the depositor directly give to the uh, needy party without going through the intermediary? Any reason? Why can't you give? Okay, right. Good word. Trust. So it means what? You don't trust your best friend to give away your hard-earned money, but you trust a bank. Okay. So for centuries, for known history, that's what we were doing. We call ourselves, we have family friends. Okay, we have friends, we have relatives, but when it comes to money, trust matters. And you trust an institute instead of the person whom you know from the very beginning. You don't give money to your best friend 
but you hand over it to a bank. And you call, I trust the bank. Okay. Now, why do you trust the bank? Then your best plan. Do it. Bank is a regulated institute. Right. So you believe the regulated financial intermediaries are the best place to deposit. Good. Right. Now, why don't you give your money to your best friend? Because you don't trust him. Because his performance is not regulated by anyone. If he does not pay back, you have no place to rely on. Okay. Therefore, financial intermediaries have been there for the non time. For a very long time and they have been charging something called interest for the service they offer what is the service they offer to the depositors by accepting money and to the borrowers by lending money for that they charge something and this charging is known as interest There were, there were different views, especially when you charge unnecessarily high interest. The third party is earning unnecessarily without doing any worthwhile activity. So there were a lot of bad feelings about money lenders. Anyway, money lenders cannot be removed out from the system. In the other times in Europe, the Christians believed charging interest is bad and the Arabians, the Muslims believe charging interest is bad. But whatever it is, this financial intermediary with charging interest is there. It was very difficult to remove them. Now, why do you think it's very difficult to remove financial intermediaries? And you said you trust them and they are highly regulated. Right. Think practically and tell me one reason why can't you remove financial intermediaries that charge interest? Okay. Yeah, you call it maturity transformation. What is maturity transformation? When I take a loan, when do I want to pay back? When I take a loan, when do I want to pay back? Long run, very good. I want to extend the maximum period to pay back. So my installment, monthly, monthly rental will be very small. But the depositor, how long he is ready to hold his deposited money? What is the maturity period you prefer? You prefer short term, ideally one year, correct. Okay. Now, when I take a housing loan, I'm asking to extend it to 20 odd years to pay back, at least 10 years to pay back. But when I'm handing my money as a deposit, I never accept 10 year or 20 year maturity. What do I want? I want one year deposit maximum i am ready to go for four or five years but i never ready to go for 10 year fixed deposit 20 year fixed deposit never ever means what maturity transformation when i want to take loans i want to extend the payback period when i deposit i want the shortest maturity period ideally one year as long as these differences are there, it's very difficult to remove financial intermediaries. They always come to this third party and ready to pay interest. Now you said you trust because of this central bank, the regulator. Now here, there's something called 
statutory reserve requirement. Statutory reserve requirement. Make a note of it. SRR. We call it SRR. Statutory reserve requirement. And I'm giving you something to do in your free time. Take Excel sheet. Okay, you will have access to Microsoft Excel. Take Excel sheet. And imagine there is a country which has only rupees 10,000. That is the only amount this whole country is having. Okay. And your first column deposit. Then you deposit in the first one, you put 10,000. Right. Then the second column, you call it statutory reserve ratio. Okay. So the first column is deposit. Second one is SRR. This time, let your SRR be 10%. Then the third column is lending. Right. Now what you do is you have to formulate the deposit. Initially you pay 10,000. For that, you have to keep a reserve. Okay, means what? Someone comes to your bank and give you 10,000 as a deposit. Out of this 10,000, you have to minimum keep 10% of it in your account. So the reserve is 10,000 into 10%, that is 1,000. So you can formulate that with the Excel sheet. The balance, the third column, you can lend out. So first column minus second column, that is 9,000. Again, you must put the equal this blended amount as the next deposit. The first column is deposit. Okay. And then you can drag it. Finally, when you drag the whole thing, you will see how much you have lended out, how much in your reserves, and how much deposits you have created. Try to do it yourself, then you will easily find out one thing. In this hypothetical case, there is a country which has money supply of 10,000. Out of this 10,000, the bank has to keep 10% as a reserve. That is the legal requirement or statutory requirement. So you call it statutory reserve ratio is 10%. So when someone comes to your bank and deposit 10,000, you can, you can't give away that entire 10,000 as a deposit, as a lend. Then what you do, you have to keep 10% as a reserve. And the balance you can lend out. So you can, when someone deposit 10,000, you can lend out 9,000. When someone deposit 9,000, you have to keep 900 as reserve. The balance 8,100, you can lend out. So this, once you formulate that in the Excel sheets, it's very easy. You can drag it for 100 or 200 steps down and accumulate it. Then you can see how much deposits you have got, how much in your reserves, and how much you have lended out. With this 10,000, you will find out in the reserves, you have 10,000. Means what? If fractional reserving system continues, the banking system can always give away the highest deposit taken. And you can create money when you are given 10,000, you can create 10 times of that with the saga. So you create money of 100,000, entire country has 10,000, but you 
the banking system creates 100,000. Okay, so that is statutory reserve. And with this, you can create money. Okay, so we are looking at financial intermediaries. You have savings or the uh, surplus units. You give that to banks. Banks are regulated by central bank, which says you have to maintain a statutory reserve and the balance you can give it away as loans. Then it continues. Okay. At the beginning, we said you have surplus units, you have deficit units. Surplus units. Surplus units. If you have excess money, what can you do? If you have excess money, you can deposit. When you deposit, you will get something called FD certificate. Okay. Right. Think very creatively. You have excess money. Depositing is one option. Okay. Now, if you deposit in a commercial bank, what is the interest rate the commercial bank will offer you these days? Tell me a value and I'll accept it. You have 1 million and you go to a bank and, okay, so you are given 5%, 5.5, right, right. Are you happy with this 5? Are you happy with this 5%? Others, are you happy with this 5%? Good, good. Very good. I'll give a magical number. This magical number is 72. Divide 72 by the return that annual return that you get for your investment. Got it? Now, if the market interest rate is 10%, if you divide 72 by 10, what do you get? 7.2. Means what? Okay, so this number 72 we call magical number. If you divide this magical number by the market interest rate, you will see the number of years it will take to double your investment. So if you have 1 million today and if you have deposit that on 10% compounding interest, it will take 7 years. To double your initial investment. Now I am lowering the interest. And you said interest is 5. How many years will it take to double your initial investment? Seventy two divided by 5. Okay. Good. It will take 15 or 14 odd years to double your investment. Let's assume you are 20 years old and you have 1 million in your hand. I'll repeat, you are 20 years old and you have 1 million rupees in your hand and you deposit that in a bank account at 5%. That 1 million will be 2 million when you reach 35 years old. Are you happy? Say yes or no. Okay. Okay. Now I would say, fine, good. I would say, if you had 1 million, in March 2020, and if you purchased Central Industries shares from Columbus Stock Exchange at 30 rupees by November of 2020, a share would be sold at 100, 110 rupees yesterday. Okay. OEC calculation, let's make it 90 rupees. 
Let's make it 110. Let's make it 90. Okay. From March to November, how many months were there? From March to November, how many months? Eight. Very good. Very good. Within eight months, what is the return percentage you purchased at 30, you sold at 90? How many times your investment has grown up by percentage? By percentage, it's three falls. Okay. Now 13 to 30 percent, what is that? My dear, get back to numbers. You purchased at 30 and you sold at 90. Okay. How many times has it grown? Within eight months. Yeah, return is 200 percent. But I'm asking, profit is, that's profit. I'm asking entire growth, including the capital. That is 90 divided by 30. Right? 90 divided by 30. What is that? Three times. Three times. Okay? That means 300%. Right? So if you deposited 1 million, okay, if you have purchased 1 million central industries or sin shares, in March, you have sold that yesterday, having three million in your hand, where it took only eight months. Where, if you had one million and if you had deposited that in a bank, you had to wait until 35 years old to see it getting double. Okay. Now this is why some people become rich faster and for some people it's a dream okay now tell me why so what are the instruments that are available for those who have excess units those who have excess money what are the alternative activities they can do you have excess money. You have one million excess. Stocks is one thing. That's not the only thing. What are the other things? Deposits you said, stocks you said, shares, commodities, unit trust, treasury bills. Okay, tell me more. You have excess money. I have given you one million now. What are you going to do with that? Insurance, FDs, notes, okay, commercial papers, promissory notes. Okay, now suppose I'm giving you one million today. What will you do? You have told me a lot of things. But tell me some more things that you can do. Right. I'll give you 10 million. What will you do? I'll give you 10 million now. What will you do? Okay, very good. Land, land, invest. Right. Okay. Okay, good. I'll give you. All right. I got the answer what I need. Invest in a business. Use it as a capital. That's another option. Okay. So those who have excess money, you have 101 options to do. And the most lazy person, okay, will select the easiest, least, less risk option. So you prefer depositing. That is the easiest and the less riskiest. So you go for treasury bills and the government will pay you. Yes, correct. Treasury bill. You go for treasury bill and the government will definitely pay you because government has the access to access to the printing button of cash so they will not default even the money will not have any value still they can print money and give you back your money so treasury bill 
those who are not at all interested in risk will prefer treasury bill and the interest rate or the return will be extremely low and based on your risk appetite so we use this nice term risk appetite based on your risk appetite you can decide the return you want i told you nice example with columbus stock exchange okay when i told you that you became very greedy oh my god you can be quickly rich by investing in columbus stock exchange okay and i'll tell you what happened to many 2000 okay mm, 20 january the market was trading in a fair manner and those who purchased shares in 2020 january let's say you purchased a particular share central industries at 38 all of found by march covid 19 unexpectedly enter to sri lanka and the entire country will be soon subject to curfew the very first day schools were closed down you can see what happened to the food stocks at kargil sand kills sand up vanished people were panicking but so with so many nice stories you purchased the same share which i mentioned central industries at 38 january by march it has fallen to 30 rupees everyone is selling and no buyers my god covid will kill half of the sri lankans better to cash out now everyone in a rush to sell the market crashed okay so when the columbus stock exchange comes down by 5% the market halted itself no trading after half an hour restart another 5% halt crash right your heart <clears throat> is like a motorboat engine and you want to sell your share now and somehow you managed to sell it at 30 rupees oh my god i escaped okay now that is the risk you made a nice loss if you are deposit in a bank my dear whatever these uh consultants are telling i am safe if i kept my money in a bank i would not end up in losing the capital here i went to stock market and purchased a share recommended by my guru and i purchased it and i somehow managed to get out at a loss and i'm happy that's the risk you are undertaking okay so from one side within 8 months 300% growth but the return the growth the other side within 3 months you have cut down your capital okay so you talked about so many different options but they have something called risk today i discuss like this in detail but from next week i'll flush out the slides but today we'll discuss okay so those who have excess you can go for stocks bonds notes cds then trinity plans treasury bills life insurance bankers exempts there are 101 options if you have excess money and what really happen is you translate to a deficit spending and they pay back and that is done to a third party known as financial intermediary now comes our sector nbfi non banking financial institutions or non banking financial intermediaries 
facilitate bank related financial services such as investment risk pooling contractual savings and market brokering examples of these include insurance firms pawn shops cashier checks issuers check cashing locations payday lending currency exchanges and microloan organizations so once again this is not a comprehensive one there are enough institutions who are involved in non banking the only thing that differentiate us from commercial banks is we cannot have demand deposits or check issuing other than checks almost all activities of a bank is done by non banks but by the definition sometimes their area is restricted insurance companies only do insurance pawn brokers they don't do leasing they only do pawn brokering likewise now our sector is known as shadow banking okay now shadow banking you have heard something called shadow cabinet in politics so when you are in opposition we normally believe in a democratic country opposition is there to capture power democratically and immediately remove and replace the ministries okay in order to do that when you are in opposition you must have a set of people who almost act like shadow cabinet ministers so in the government there is a health minister who is looking into covid activities if you have a main opposition they also must have a shadow minister for health who will have optional plan if we are in power this is what we are doing okay suppose by a miracle immediately there is a swap the government becomes opposition and opposition becomes government then that opposition must remove and replace the existing health minister that is called shadow cabinet that's how a good democratic system continue operations the shadow is not real but the moment reality comes they can perform the same task so in shadow boxing they practice as if they are fighting with the unseen opponent now when it comes to our area non banking financial intermediaries we are also known as a shadow shadow of what shadow of banking system now shadow banking is a term used by paul mccully and he referred to all nba files are similar to traditional commercial banks and we carry out almost all activities like a bank except demand deposits so for example let us remember shadow banking is a term coined by paul mccully and that means nbfi sector can be considered equally as a bank the only activity which nbfi sector cannot do is demand deposits or check issuing over the past few decades a network of diverse non bank financial firms and markets dubbed the shadow banking system by economist paul mccully had developed alongside the formal banking system the shadow banking system include non bank lenders like mortgage companies and consumer finance companies okay so this shadow banks have been continuously growing and it has become part and parcel of the financial intermediary process now this is paul mccully a large segment of financial intermediation that outside the balance sheets of regulated commercial banks and other depository institutions right at banking institute we are studying about nbf files because they are competitors of banks at the same time they are almost like banks what they do we have to study so our subject area will include almost everything in finance 
we may talk about insurance factoring margin trading stock trading money brokering pawning almost every activity and we are also regulated by cbsl finance companies licensed finance companies then if you think about insurance that is also regulated if you think about uh, primary dealers they are regulated so our subject area is widely spread we may discuss about different topics per day today i'm just introducing the subject non banking and non banking is also known as shadow banking the term shadow banking is coined by an economist called paul mccallum and he saw the importance of nbfi sector okay. now with this cartoon you can see the banking sector is highly regulated the more it regulate the shadow bank expands and this chart shows you this diagram or this cartoon tell you one thing shadow banks are not regulated like commercial banks commercial banks are under red tapes highly regulated shadow banks are not regulated to that extent i am not saying they are not regulated even though the cartoon is straight like that no shadow banking sector is regulated but not up to the extent of banking sector but when banks are highly regulated the shadow banking expands now we are looking at sri lanka okay in sri lanka if you think about financial intermediaries all financial intermediaries you can divide it into two sides one side institutions regulated by cbsl or the central bank of sri lanka the other side is not regulated by cbsl therefore you have two sides the first subheading coming under institutions regulated by cbsl is deposit taking institutions at a glance you can see there are institutions which cannot accept deposits though they are regulated by central bank there are institutions that cannot accept deposits by issuing a deposit certificate so you call them other institutions okay so the deposit taking institutions lcbs licensed commercial banks okay in the chat box tell me some names of licensed commercial banks quickly ndb good go ahead quickly right right okay right enough now you know what are commercial banks right and these banks can give you a checkbook they can create money and they have to maintain statutory reserve ratio do the excel sheet exercise which i mentioned to you and for further studies you can refer sara google it and check then you will see similar examples using excel sheets then you will get a very good idea the government may increase the sara or reduce the sara when there is higher inflation okay right now even in the answers i saw this term inflation what is inflation okay right so inflation is defined as continuous increase of money continuous increase of prices without commensurating to the national output so if the price is continuously going up we call it inflation right what causes inflation
Now you set. Okay. Now inflation is money continuously going up. That I understand. What causes price of commodities to go up? Okay. Think in simple language. Let's assume price of coconut is going up. Tell me two reasons. Price of coconut is going up. Tell me two reasons. Very good. One is demand. What is the other? Supply. Good. So demand can, uh, price may go up for one simple commodity which you selected, coconut. Number one, less supply. There is a drought. There was a drought and there was a huge cut chopping off of coconut trees and supply is less. Then price goes up. Less supply. That is supply side. What is the other one? Higher demand. Let's assume all of a sudden. Now everyone is look at all this YouTube uh, on this exercises and other things. They say uh, lean body and anything you check in Google and check or in YouTube. You'll find they say those who are living in other countries, they say king of all oil is what? King of all oil is. Okay. What is that? King of all oil. That's how they say. Complete the rest. There are so many edible oils. And they say by now, king of all oil is coconut oil. Okay. Means what? The demand is going up. For the commodity price to go up, only two things. Number one, shortage, there is higher demand. Okay, right. When it comes to demand, we believe people will demand when they have more money in their hand. So when the money supply goes up, people demand more of commodities and the price goes up. Okay, so if price goes not because of shortage of surpluses, then it must be demand pull right so the two reasons are cost push or demand pull right now the prices go up because of these two things now when it comes to banking banks can create money so with your example now you can see how banks can create money with this SADA. Therefore, banks are highly regulated. From time to time, you can see statutory reserve ratio is increased or decreased. When money supply is high, when money supply is high, government will increase SADA so banks can create less money. When government want to see growth, development, fast track development. They reduce SRR and there will be more money available for people. Okay? So that's how the banking system is used. That's where commercial banks play a major role. Then you have licensed specialized banks. They have only special activity to do. Right, once again, tell me some examples of licensed specialized banks. Now you gave me good examples for, okay, good, good. Specialized, they have only one special task, NSB, deposit mobilization, HDFC, RDB, okay. State mortgage, that's there. Yeah, your answers are correct. You have a NSB, SDB, uh, HDFC, see, then state mortgage and investment bank. So these are specialized banks. Licensed finance companies. 
Tell me some examples quickly. Licensed finance companies. Okay, good. So you know the institutions, what they do, and you know the examples. Very good. Okay, right. The other side, EPF, you know what is that? Out of your salary, a particular percentage is cut down and deposited. So 8%, 12%, altogether 20 that is deposited at EPF. In return, EPF deposits in treasury bills as well as in stocks. Then you have primary dealers. Tell me some names of primary dealers. Okay. Okay. What else? Tell me some other names. Yesterday, I think we got a, that site. I was waiting for that name. Yeah, yesterday we got a SMS about this Arjun Mahendran's issue again. And after that issue, a primary dealer's license was suspended. And that is mentioned by you. That is perpetual treasury. So perpetual treasury was one primary dealer. Anyway, the license is suspended. And tell me one more name, first capital. Okay. So you must look into areas beyond commercial banks. Okay. Commercial banks are very popular, and you directly gave the examples of commercial banks as primary dealers. All right. Think about others. There is first capital, perpetual treasury is there. So likewise, there are institutions which are not commercial banks but engaged in NBFIs. Then specialized leasing companies. Okay. Now, People's Leasing Company was once a specialized leasing company, and later on, they acquired Ceylon Merchant Leasing Company through Columbus Stock Exchange, got the finance license, and now that is not a specialized leasing company but a licensed finance company. Then there was Isuru, that was another one later acquired by another. Uh, Firm. Then you have asset line. So likewise, you have specialized leasing companies. Now this is in 2018. Total assets of banking sector, how they are divided. And you can see how big and strong the state banks and NSB being a specialized bank among the assets, what was their composition? Then you can see the rest of banks. Right, now we are looking into NBFIs not regulated by <clears throat> CBSL. Then there are deposit taking institutions which are not regulated by central bank. Okay. So rural banks, thrift and credit cooperative societies, Then you have contractual savings institutions, ETF, private provident funds, insurance companies. You have some more other specialized financial institutions, merchant banks, venture capital, unit trust, stock blocking companies, credit rating agencies. Okay. You was very fast and very good. When I talked about commercial banks as well as on licensed finance companies. Now we'll just look at the rest of the area. Okay. Tell me some credit rating agencies, names of credit rating agencies. Okay. Okay. Right. Then tell me some names of stock blocking companies. 
stock blocking companies. Yeah, Krishna Kumar, venture capital I describe a little bit later. Okay. Okay. Okay, good. So you know some examples for stock blockers. Unit trusts. Some examples of unit trusts. Correct. Pradesha, JB Securities, correct. Okay. Unit trusts. Some names. Unit trusts. Some names. Okay, now my National Asset Management Limited. Okay, what else? If the single trust is not a unit trust, that's a name. First capital unit trust, no, that's a primal dealer. Yeah, Silon Asset Management is there, NB, NDB unit trust is there. Yes, right now we come to another one venture capital. Soft logic, yeah. yeah. Right. Now, when it comes to when, when it comes to venture capital, tell me some examples. Okay. Now, venture capital means. An individual known as an angel investor will give away money to start up businesses to start a new company and they are not just giving you a loan. The venture capitalists want to be an owner of the business for a limited period. Okay. So venture capital is not much popular product in Sri Lanka. Right. So venture capital is like this. You have a business idea. Think about uh, you have something like a social media website, something like Facebook. You have idea and you go to a bank and the bank will almost reject you because you are too young. You don't have an asset to give as a mortgage and what you are creating is nothing if you fail. If I give you a loan for the motorbike, if you fail, I'll get hold of the bike and sell it. If I give you a loan for the three wheeler, if you fail, if you don't pay back, I'll seize it and resell. So I have an asset. But when it comes to this website developing, you are creating nothing but space. So I don't have anything to sell back. So I'm afraid. As a bank, I'm not ready to give you that loan. But there are angel investors, wealthy individuals, or sometimes companies, who are ready to give you money as capital and involve in your business activity, charge your interest plus a profit margin. Later on, they will sell their ownership in your business and get out of your business. So that is called venture capital, which is not a popular product in Sri Lanka. Right. That's the beginning. Now we have an understanding of NBFI sector, financial intermediation, plus a rough picture about Sri Lankan financial sector. Entire financial intermediation process of Sri Lanka. Now we have a rough idea. Let me ask you some questions. I think you can get into the slides if you want and tell me the answer. Right. The first question is all deposit taking institutions are regulated by CBSA. Tell me whether I'm correct or whether I'm not correct. Right or wrong. All deposit. OK, right. Right, 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 right. Good, good. So it's not. 
right then next one a specialized leasing company can accept deposits a specialized leasing company can accept deposits say yes or no okay i see some yes i see some no right let me go back institutions regulated by cbsa deposit taking institutions only these institutions can accept deposits and regulated by central bank so you can see specialized leasing companies are not falling under the category of deposit taking institutions means what they cannot accept deposits from general public got it okay get a very clear picture of this so ideally you take a paper piece of paper divide the paper into two sides and the top without any division you can say financial intermediaries of sri lanka then you can divide one side institutions regulated by cbsl the other side institutions not regulated by cbsl then the first topic is deposit taking institutions which falls under cbsl the other side the same which is not falling to cbsl so your first question was whether all deposit taking institutions are regulated by cbsl you said no very clear the chart shows no there are other institutions which are not regulated by cbsl but can accept deposits then comes other institutions means what there are institutions coming under cbsl's purview but cannot accept deposits and and specialized leasing companies fall into that category so the answer is very clear no specialized leasing companies cannot accept deposits got it specialized leasing companies cannot accept deposits okay now i said when you are a financial intermediary you have to get money and give away money okay specialized leasing companies now they cannot accept money from general public then the question comes how do specialized leasing companies obtain funds another way of asking the same question what are the funding sources of specialized leasing companies loans commercial papers debentures promissory notes shares warrants right so these are owners money bank borrowings promissory notes very good right okay okay what right. so these are the options available for specialized leasing company to command source command funds okay good right now we are looking into another important area today let me tell you about an individual an individual businessman of us and he died a long time ago let whether you know him say yes or no jp morgan do you know him i mean have you heard his name okay right jp morgan was a banker of us Right. and you, even now we have this morgan bank and during bank runs he almost acted like the reserve bank of us So J.P. Morgan acted almost like the Reserve Bank of U.S. 
when there was a bank one hope you have heard this term bank one but he was there to protect small banks that were almost about to collapse okay what is a bank one what is a bank run depositors rushing to withdraw money sudden rush of withdrawal of deposits withdrawal okay but so when there was bank run why there can be bank runs i accept your answer bank run means depositors rushing to take away money the deposited money from a bank or from the banking system why do people want to withdraw money all of sudden yes when they lose confidence in financial industry reputation risk okay very good when one bank collapses people believe the other will also collapse and they rush to withdraw money okay now those days think practically okay if people are rushing to withdraw money what can you do there were very creative solutions those days okay now people are rushing in queues to withdraw money okay and most of the time remember this is psychological okay trust confidence are psychological things okay now i told you when covid 19 started to spread the people panicked throughout the world and started to sell their stocks and within months now they regret of their bad decisions but that day okay, you you can uh, see the charts of trading economics plus any stock exchange nike or whatever right you can see throughout the world the same behavior march end almost all the stock exchanges in the world so a crash people behave in a very quick manner to sell out their shares and we call it herd mentality people the human being always follow the buffaloes the buffaloes behave in herd mentality if what someone is ahead of you you follow him and the entire herd is following moving in the same direction human beings are like that like buffaloes okay so when everyone want to sell everyone want to sell when everyone want to buy you also want to buy herd mentality right so when people are rushing to withdraw money in us they came up with some nice solutions one is asking the tellers to slow the process of counting cash okay so in banks today you have cash counting machines and within seconds you can count millions but those days people had a superb practice of counting cash by their hands you have seen that traditional tellers even in sri lanka superb cash counting very fast almost like a machine but they were asked to count very slowly when you count very slowly what will happen when someone want to withdraw money now this guy want to withdraw a good amount not just 5000 2000 about 500000 1 million and you are giving away cash and you count very slowly what will happen the queue will yeah correct now you may slow down count that's it delays in withdrawals that is the expectation when you count slowly here yeah, your accuracy will go up but even the tellers with practice accurate and they were fast now these guys are asked to slow down right not for the accuracy but to delay the process when you delay you can 
pay out less withdrawals per day. Anyway, you shut down at the closing time. So you can ensure less withdrawals. They were creative way of handling that. In this situation, okay, there were such situations, three or four situations. JP Morgan interfered, being a very senior bank and having a bank himself, owning a bank himself, he acted as the central bank or the reserve bank and ensured non-closure of small banks and created confidence among the general public. This senior banker was taken to US Senate hearings or even to courts. And in one such situation, he was asked by the state lawyer, you banker give away loans to anyone who is already rich. You bankers evaluate the property, existing properties of a person and give away loans. JP Morgan said, no sir, character matters. No, sir, character matters. Means what? When we are evaluating a person for credit worthiness, we are following different models. Tampa is a very popular model. It starts with the first C, character. Okay. So JP Morgan said, no, sir, character matters. And that became a very popular term. It is said people clapped in favor of his argument. Right. What do you mean by character matters when it comes to lending? What do you mean by character here? Not your school character certificate or some other meaning accepted by the society? Genuine non repayment. Very good. When you say yes, you say yes. When you say no, that is no. Genuine non repayment. So there are people who are willingly defaulters. They take loans with the purpose of hiding immediately after taking loans. And they somehow try to get a loan, then never pay back, try to avoid payback. But the character repays on time, genuine. And that people are often preferred by banks. So character matters when, when it comes to evaluating credit. Ability. What is ability? Ability to pay back. Okay, now let's assume before this southern highway was constructed, we had no other option but to use the same traditional gold road. So there were very popular places, the students that we stop our vehicle and sip a coffee or a tea, having a snack. So these places were so popular and any bank without any reluctancy were ready to give them loans. Character is there. They were genuine bakery owners, restaurants, okay, tea shops, and they have the ability to pay back the loans they take. Now, what has happened after construction of Southern Highway? Very few people on trips use traditional, old, conventional gold road. Okay. Now, these restaurant owners are really good. Their character is good. They are genuine. But what has happened to their ability? What has happened? Yes, the ability is affected badly. Okay, so we are evaluating first the character, then the ability. Right. So economy is such. The people who had the ability, all of a sudden lose the ability. We have to be vigilant on that. Right. Clip report will tell about the characters, a glimpse idea of the character. Right. But not the ability. Character is based on your past, but ability 
is the current situation. So you have to use your feelings, other sources of information, site visiting, and see the ability. Margin, the interest margin that we are offering, purpose. I have seen some advertisements, especially on credit cards and personal loans, especially on personal loans. The advertisement itself say, we don't ask why. Right? So when you are taking a personal loan, you can take it for many reasons, for your wedding, for the trip to buy the camera, anything. Personal loans, the bank is not really asking why. But on all the other sorts of loans, bank is asking why. Now someone appears to you and offers a set of very luxurious vehicles, CR books and say, mortgage it and give me 90 million loan. Okay, so he's coming with one Benz car, one Land Rover, right, one Jaguar, and the value is about 150 million altogether and he gives away the CR books and say okay you keep it as a mortgage and give me 90 million are you going to give away this 90 million to him without asking any reason no right accept is something but out of my 90 million what are you going to do right with that what is the income generation that you are going to create? So it's not the asset we are evaluating. We are evaluating you, asking you the purpose. So we are asking the purpose. Right. So under credit evaluation, purpose is another important thing. At the same time, this is why conventional bankers fail to give loans for some promising businesses like website development or COVID-19 experiments. The banks will not come and give them loans. This is where venture capitalists would come because the purpose, the way we evaluate the purpose is different from the way a venture capitalist will evaluate. Amount. Okay, We are not ready to give any amount of money, the amount really required. Repayment. Finally, insurance here insurance mean a mechanism where if everything fails still we must be able to get hold of something and recover our capital so it can be a real insurance for the housing loan we ask to get a insurance so if the loan taker dies still we can recover from insurance credit card companies often prefer to have an insurance policy against death that's really insurance but in many other cases it's not an insurance policy, but a mortgage, a collateral, a security, an asset back. Everything is just <laughs> under one term insurance. It's widely used as health check for business when approaching a bank for lending. Okay. So Campari is a very important acronym for credit evaluation, whether you are in a bank or whether you are in a finance company. Okay, so you have this further described, Campari, then it's further developed. So Campari is not the only model. This is another model. Once again, character. Character means integrity, history and background. So I said about this example from uh, Gold Road. It's history, but Southern Highway has changed that. So history should be looked at, but it is not the only thing. Yet, history talks about the formation of a person. Okay. So psychologically, we believe in this from different angles. Character, we evaluate from past. Okay. 
Now I'll ask some questions. A person's past is not good in repayment. So clip is bad. In general, I'm asking in general. A person who was very bad in past, can he be good in future? Okay, so I get a mixed feeling and the same with me. From one side, we have seen many criminals. Very good. It depends with the background. Very good. Right. We have seen many criminals. Okay. Uh, why did they become criminals? Because of their background. One underworld leader of Sri Lanka, he was about to become a priest, but finally decided to take the gun because of his father and uncle, they were killed by the other competing party. Means what? The background creates you. But many religious teachings, like Angulimala, that tell us a person's past will not exactly represent his future. However, he should be reformed. Okay, So this is why you have this rehabilitation and reformations. If you don't reform, definitely past is there. At the same time, unfortunately, human beings are like computers. Hardware capacity matters. You can see there are many old computers that cannot accept so many sophisticated activities what we do today. The capacity is less. You can see certain mobile phones stuck. Capacity is less. Same with individuals. Right. Now, today we have time to discuss these things, but from next week onwards, we may directly move away with a topic and complete it because so you have to run with the time, complete the syllabus and look at past papers. Now, I'm talking about some practical things. Character. There were some very good customers. Let's say a customer took a three-wheeler and paid back sharply well. And after two years, he has deposited 500,000 in our institution those days okay after repaying the three will within that period he has also started saving in a savings accounts in our institution and he has deposited by that time five hundred thousand when he settled the leasing for three wheel those days if you have five hundred thousand as initial capital you can go for the bus he has taken a bus route permit and now he has the initial capital we happily gave away him the bus now he became a bus owner and the three three wheeler is outsourced. So he has double income. And he's the bus driver now. And after some time, okay, within five years, he got hold of five buses. Now he's bus mudalai. Okay. Then he purchased a petrol shed and funded by us, looking at past. Okay. He grew on a very fast track. Why we gave him loans? Why did we give him loans? What were we evaluating? Yeah. Yeah, we'll come to five C's, yes. Past performance and the character. Very good. So when your character is good, when your past is good, when his repayment is genuine, we are ready to give him loans. Right. Now, 
the fourth or the whatever you call the war in 2009 war ended in sri lanka now he is one of the best customers of ours and war ended his area became very attractive for tourism he wanted to start up a hotel not a huge sophisticated hotel something called a hotel plus he wanted to have seven vans to run for tourism and we happily gave him and he failed and he failed why he failed think and tell me why yeah that's why he failed he can't pay very good it's not his field it's not his field right at the same time we if you look at his capacity he's a three wheeler driver moved into buses still transportation sector and think about you manage bus drivers and conductors you are very harsh on them you know the income of the route everything now you move into tourism you don't have any language knowledge you do not know why these tourists are coming to sri lanka and you are running luxury vehicles you are not maintaining them like buses and three wheelers they are not maintained right you are treating these tourist guides and that driver who can speak in english in the same manner you treat your three wheel drivers and you don't recruit right managers with knowledge to run this hotel you get a very obedient three wheel driver as the hotel manager and everything collapses you are looking at the past i accept character matters but it is not the only thing that you should depend his integrity is good history background okay. then capital the bado was stake in business we are not ready to give 100% leasing 100% loan facility okay you also make a commitment that's why i said okay if you have 500000 those days we gave you a bus because you put 500000 out of your hard earned money your own capital capability manage the land technical competence campaign only talk about character capability ability okay further development from ability manage the land technical competence you are not technical competent in tourism you don't have managerial capacity in tourism yes your managerial capacity is perfectly well for three wheelers and bus drivers but not for this purpose the purpose or reason for which the facility is required this time for tourism and tourism is not like bus or three wheeler even in covid still somehow these three wheelers and buses are making at least a small marginal income not the tourist sector purpose is different amount adequacy of loan amount required okay do you know we know the value of a bus we can easily value three wheeler but not the construction of a hotel right okay. maybe your contract has taken too much and you are fooled out that cannot happen when you are purchasing a vehicle especially in first time vehicles repayment the sources from which the loan will be repaid and the repayment period terms security security this one insurance developed as security so you can easily add collateral and assets now comes 5 c's okay the same further and further developed capacity okay we'll start with character your credit evaluation clip report shows your character conditions okay factors like interest rate and amount of principal how much you are putting are you putting 20% 50% we are putting conditions capacity okay 
you have the ability to pay back. Your character is good, but now the capacity has come down these reasons. Your capacity is okay for one side, one industry, but not to this industry. Capital, your level of seriousness. Okay, I'm not ready to put a single amount of, a single rupee out of my pocket, and I want the entire thing from the bank. So if I fail, that's not my problem, that's the bank's problem. Collateral, if I fail, what is the security? I give it to the bank. So that is known as collateral. Okay, right. Now a customer comes to your bank to lease out a forklift. You know what is a forklift? Right? Hope you know that. Say yes or no. Right. Right. Now you have seen in container yards, you have a small vehicle like equipment, uh, vehicle, it's almost a vehicle with uh, a driver, and you have an arm. So you can put a weight on it and carry it to another location. Now you can understand. Hope. Right. You have a fork like arm in front of this small wheeled vehicle, and you take yes, right. And here comes a customer and say, I want a leasing facility for the forklift, and I'll give a value, let's say five million. Now you ask about him. He says, I'm a bottle of the a junk collector. And I have been doing this business for five odd years. What I do is I collect uh, old newspapers and metal items, buy it at cheap, sell it to a collector, and I keep my margin. One day I happen to buy a forklift for metal value. Instead of reselling it to my collector, what I did is I went to a technician and did some repair. Then I found a container yard and I rented out this forklift. And that seems to be a good business. Then I purchased few such condemned forklifts, repaired them. Now they are running in different container yards. Now I got a new order in a garment and that's owned by a Japanese guy, partly owned by a Japanese guy. They are very much quality conscious. I cannot put a repaired one there. And to meet their capacity, I need this vehicle right now all the other vehicles are very easy to give away because you can seize them because they are running on roads forklifts they are not running on roads they are located in one place and don't move much especially they don't come very rarely or never come to main road so you cannot easily seize out okay now will you lend him will you grant him this leasing facility Okay, now why don't you grant? Risk is very high. Risk is very high. You can't seize. Repayment is uncertain. Very good. Now I have issue with the repayment. Right. Now that's one difference between banks and the finance company. For the banks, you get so many business inquiries, you can easily turn down businesses and still you can run your business profitably. But when it comes to NPFIs, what we get hold is what is left over by you, the commercial banks. So these are some of the opportunities we find. Remember, the banks are not ready to give away loans to these people. Means what? These people desperately need cash, loans, borrowings, and they are not much worried about interest rate. Why? 
because the banks are not giving them they can't bargain on interest rate therefore we can charge slightly higher interest rate than average okay now repayment is answer though we consider them we are not providing them loans as fools we have to take <clears throat> a calculated risk not unknown risk but we undertake a calculated risk okay i accept your term repayment is uncertain but i want to give him this loan and if so i want to avoid the fact that you mentioned repayment is uncertain how can i ensure that his repayment is certain no insurance companies will not yeah what is the source of income very good now the source of income is very clear he said he need this forklift to be occupied in a garment which is partly owned by japanese right so if the garment pays him definitely he will pay us okay if the garment pays him he will pay us now what should i do okay i have two options number one reject the loan you can do it easily because you are in a commercial bank very good i will ask him i will ask him to submit me the contract between him and the government if the government is going to sign a contract with him for 3 years we are ready to obtain your machine at this rate in short i get a proof of his income okay so i am overcoming the ability now the problem is character then i'll have to check his character now so far he has not taken any loan means what he is not in crib it's very difficult to find his genuinity on payback that's another risk i am undertaking okay so i have to ask him or go on a field visit gather some information okay he is not employed he is not a employed person employment letter is given for employee is not a employee he is a uh, self employed bank statements he is not having any bank statement yeah we have to investigate about him and check whether he is genuine right so i'm discussing you this camp party the way we look at things the way we evaluate him that side field visit report very good okay so we are moving away conventionally yes it's better not to give him that's okay but if we can just filter out easy we will find less customers for nbfi sector for banks you can easily do that there'll be much and more good customers than worrying about these customers but remember in bfi sector charge a higher interest rate than a bank so very clearly good customers need not to come to nbfis therefore nbfis have to find good customers among this kind of customers anyway it's slightly high in risk side so this is why nbfi sectors lending rate is higher than commercial banks at the same time this is why nbfi sectors deposit interest rate is also higher than conventional banking sector because we can offer slightly higher for deposits because you are paid slightly higher than the banks okay so i'm showing you how we 
have to evaluate the leftovers by commercial banks. Now you can understand our subject area is NBFIs. NBFI means we are competing with banks without having current account facility. We cannot create money. Now comes the situation, selection of customers. Customers have options, go for bank, go for NBFI. In certain aspects, NBFI is some master in one subject, maybe pawning, maybe uh, factoring, maybe margin trading. But most of the activities, banks are competing with us. Leasing, margin trading, banks are competing with us. Therefore, we have to evaluate differently than banks. But the same factors, the same factors apply. Okay, now character can be social character, legal character. Okay. Capacity, income statement, interview and observation. Now, in this example of this forklift, I don't have income statement analysis, but I have interview and observation. This is subjective. This may be the view may be different from person to person, but this one is objective. Income statement, as you mentioned, if I can get hold of an employee's uh, salary statement, that's subjective. It is not changing from person to person's way of evaluating. Then assets and liabilities. Here yeah, this interview. Collateral, is it tangible? Liquidity. Conditions. Real estate analysis or economic survey in the five C's. Okay, when you when you study these five C's or so compare, think practically, like the examples I discussed. They need not to be actual examples, but if you are working in a bank or finance company, you will have ample number of actual examples and think about yourself in such a situation. Is it good to give away loan or Will he be able to pay back? Think. The same character, integrity, honesty, track record with other creditors and suppliers, past bad debts. Now, this is how we evaluate the character. We believe. If a person is defaulting to another bank, definitely he will default on me. Payback history. Financial strength, wealthy position, balance sheet, how much of own resource in the project, capacity, financial strength, cash flow, ratio analysis, customer base, management expertise. Now we talked about a guy who is very good in managing a bus business, failed in tourism. Your capacity is different. Your expertise is different. There are ample number of examples where very good customers failed when they got entered into a new, a new avenue. There was a person who was involved in manufacturing envelopes. And now he find envelope business is not lucrative like those days. Competition is there at the same time, demand is less. Today, now those days, Everything you post, and I can remember one guy has put a post in Facebook and says, those days I got letters from friends and girls and others. Today I get letters only from banks and asking or reminding me my repayments. Okay. Now banks are not doing that. You get a lot of SMS alerts for e-statements. Now think about the number of envelopes that has reduced in demand. Okay. Now, since his known business of printing is failing, he moved out into tourism. And that was 2019. Initially, Sahadans attack, then the COVID, and now he's in almost bankrupt condition. 
Okay, he was a very good up-to-date paymaster, but his management expertise is not in the new field. Even your expert, I know it's very difficult in tourism. Then the conditions, the economy, the industry, supply base, boom and slump. That's how the economy is moving. Booms and busts. Right? But tourism, even though you are an expert, you have to look at the economic condition. Collaterals, alternative sources of repayment, marketability, value, location. So these are coming under collaterals. So we are again and again looking at credit evaluation. So you have five C's. Okay, so with practice, you will understand to read statements, to read faces, to read facial expressions, and just think about an individual, to evaluate an individual. And today we may use many other factors. Sometimes when it comes to big loans, you will use a lot of intelligence sources to check about that individual. And these acronyms, CAMEL and 5Cs, will be definitely helpful for you in your credit evaluation. Now, remember, okay, so we have seen most of these superstar competitions and we have seen some failed characters in these superstar competitions become superb singers later. And some who became number one, number two, now we can't even remember. The same applies in credit evaluation as well. Those who pass in credit evaluation will get bank loans, but remain a moderate income situation where many institutions, many individuals who failed in obtaining loans became very successful thanks to venture capital. Later on, we look into such examples. Okay. But we cannot blame the way we evaluate customers, the way we evaluate credit. The reason is why we evaluate credit is to ensure that we are liable for our deposits and we will honor that liability for our depositors. We are not paying with, playing with our own hard earned money. We are playing with others money, depositors money. Therefore, we have to be extremely careful as we are the guardians of others money. Venture capital is not that. They give away their own money. Therefore, the way they evaluate credit is different from the way we evaluate. Later on, when we talk about venture capital, we can see many examples where we will never ever give them loans. But in our case, when we give away loans out of others' money, we have to be very careful. Okay. Now, today is the very first day, and by now, you know what is NBFI. We are not talking about commercial banks, but all the others are coming on the NBFI sector. Right. And we talked about collaterals. We talked about character. In brief, we talked about credit evaluation, which applies to both banks and finance companies. Right. Let me ask you some questions from this area. Okay. So I'll ask very short questions. Just tell me yes or no, or I can bleep. Okay. What is meant by financial intermediation? Just type me something in brief. What is financial intermediation? The coordination between lending and borrowing, okay? The depositing and lending. 
or you can in whatever you write your answer should be yeah facilitator or the third party must be there third party which connects surplus units and deficit deficit units and charge and interest okay then we talked about maturity transformation then there is another one called risk transformation right risk transformation means when i have 5 million as surplus money when i give away that entire 5 million to only one friend there's a very high probability he will fail but when i have 5 million i'll give it to a bank where bank has 20000 customer base so 3% may fail but the rest 97% is paying back so my money will be paid back easily we call that risk transformation risk transformation So we have maturity transformation, risk transformation. And another reason is geographic locations. Now, now if you think about getting 200 million as a loan, you may have to contact, contact huge amount of you may have to contact huge amount of people to get loans. Now, this transformation means ability to absorb risks when So this transformation, you are able to absorb risks when giving away loans. For an example, when you are giving loans for the higher portfolio, higher number of loan portfolios, and when you maintain lower NPL, still you can honor your repayments. An individual will not be able to do that because he will give away loan only for one individual. Okay? So that is going to be your risk transformation. Now, because of these reasons, it's very difficult to remove financial intermediation. Now, I'll ask you a question. With IT development, can you remove financial intermediation? With the developments of ICT, can you remove financial intermediaries? I got two answers. Yes, no. Yeah. Now, these you have to argue. Right. I'll tell you some nice examples. Wonka, Wonka. Now, these were some efforts taken, right, where internet is used to, act, to connect a large number of people. And sometimes even many new efforts are taking place. 
So we have certain things like and this later on when we talk about venture capital, we will look into these kind of things called crowdfunding. So there are attempts taking place to check new things. The world is always facing and testing new things. And we do not know about the success and the sustainability of such certain web-based efforts failed and they gave up finally. Okay. Anyway, still it's taking place, trying to avoid financial intermediary that has been tested and tried for centuries. Okay. Now, this is not an exam related question, but something practical. Will taking loans your technology cannot be reliable when it comes to financial regulation, so FIs cannot be removed. Yeah, but by now many attempts are taking place. If you have seen certain advertisements on mobile phones, they say uh, regulated by CBSL. Okay. Now mobile companies are into financial intermediation. And uh, regulation, should it be an independent body or should it be a social activity? Think about the administrators of your own social websites. Okay, some kind of self-regulation is there. Okay, what you read and write in social media, you can see, though no one is perfectly regulating, some kind of regulating taking place. Okay, so it's in the testing stage. Okay. Now, some questions. How many have have CDS accounts? I have a sample about 50, considerably a very good sample of Sri Lankan young people. How many have CDS accounts? Okay. Now, if you have, tell me CDS, yes, okay. I'm giving you another one. Life insurance. Life insurance policies. Now, life insurance policies. You can say life or insurance. Yes. Right. Savings accounts. Okay. How many of you have savings accounts? Okay, you are saving. Okay, 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 okay. It's okay, my dear. Okay. So most of you have only savings accounts. Am I correct? Yeah, most of you have only savings accounts. And ask it from your parents. They only have savings accounts. Okay, my dear friends, one objective of learning is change. Okay, when you learn this subject, I hope you will change. Right now, I told you some examples. If you have invested X amount in March, by now you you may be having three X by doing nothing. And you are very young, you can undertake risk than a senior citizen. So you have to change. Look at your market. Okay. Since you are spending me with me about two hours in internet, I know you all have access to internet. Use internet very wisely. Okay. So I'm giving you csc.lk. Get into this website, look into things that is happening there. Okay. And you need not to physically buy shares, but try to read out annual reports, try to read out quarter reports. And after reading out, compare one bank with another bank and think, okay, this bank is performing well. 
and the rate is this if i buy this share today uh, if i hold it for one year what will happen check it yourself okay. education is not just listening like this or taking notes and tutes and passing exams yes that's one almost 80 percent is that but at least take 10 or 5 percent of practice of what you learn that will change a lot of things okay so next week we'll take time to discuss about insurance and our main subject heading will be insurance and we will uh, confine entire discussion on that topic with that i'll end today's session thank you